Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll continue with what we did in the last lecture of explaining with more examples the process of obtaining modeling and prediction rules from the governing equations. As was stated earlier, the whole business of similitude is to determine the conditions under which we can predict the values of the dependent quantities for one set of independent parameters from those obtained from an experiment with different though related values of the independent parameters. We have done two examples of obtaining the similitude results for the case of a mass damping sprig vibrating system and for unsteady flow of heat from a slab. Let us now introduce the problems in fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics offer a very rich vein for the development of principles of similitude because of the complicated equations and the varied behavior under different values of various uniquity parameters. The similitude problem is that if we have two systems, one a model and a prototype, they are geometrically similar. How else would the two problems be similar such that results from a model experiment, experimental or computational can be used to predict the result for the prototype. We are given the uniquity parameters for the prototype. What should be the uniquity parameters for the model so that this similitude is obtained? And once this similitude is obtained, what should be the prediction rules that should be used to predict the results for the prototype from the model results. So, we will take this example of a flow past a circular cylinder, incompressible steady flow, the far upstream velocity is V naught, the pressure is P naught, the cylinder diameter two dimensional is D, clearly the vector velocity V would be a function of x, the location of the point in the flow field, the independent variables and the list of parameters which include V naught, the velocity far upstream, P naught, the pressure far upstream, rho and mu, the properties of the fluid, G, the acceleration due to gravity and D, the size of the cylinder measured by its diameter and the shape of the boundary, in this case cylindrical. Similarly, the dependent variable p as a function of x, the independent variable is again a function of the independent variable x and the values of the same set of uniquity parameters. We introduce the non-dimensional variables x star is x divided by characteristic length and the diameter is a valid characteristic length for this problem, z star is z by d or in the vector form as vector x star is vector x divided by d. In the velocity component u and v as u star is equal to u divided by v naught and w star as w divided by v naught and we introduce the non-dimensional pressure p star as p divided by p naught. These are the normalized independent and dependent variables. The quantities used for non-dimensionalizing the various variables should be those that characterize the problem. That is why they are called characteristic quantities. 
These are the scales that are natural to the problem. They do not depend upon artificial definition of meter, foot or anything else. They are natural to the problem on hand. The diameter of the cylinder is a natural dimension for use in this problem. All the variables are dimensionless and are expected to be order unity except at isolated points. We will talk about that later, much later. And it is for this reason these are termed as normalized variables as well. These are the governing equations for incompressible flow when it is steady. These equations in normalized form would look like del star dot v star is equal to 0. This is the continuity equation, mass balance equation. And for the steady flow, the Navier-Stokes equation in its normalized form reduces to v star dot del star v star is equal to minus p naught divided by rho v naught square del star p star minus g d by v naught squared times k, the unit vector in the vertical direction, mu by rho v d into del star square v star. The del star is the function del by del star i plus del by del y star j plus del by del star k. And this problem is to solve with boundary condition that the non-dimensional normalized velocity v star is 1 tends to 1 far away, v star is 0 on the circular boundary which now becomes x star square plus z star square is equal to 1 by 4. This is when we have non-dimensionalized x and z by the diameter d and p star tends to 1 far away. We notice that in this equation all the unicode parameters are concentrated in three groups of parameters. So, these are now the three uniquity non-dimensional parameters that define the solution of the problem. There is no parameter within the boundary conditions. These are only these three groups and that is why the non-dimensional solution of velocity is a function of x star the variable and three non-dimensional groups and the geometry. Similarly, p star Geometry in the above list of parameters is the non-dimensional geometry curve x star square plus z star square is equal to 1 fourth, which was seen at this place in the boundary conditions. So, instead of an original list of 6 plus 1 uniquity parameters, we have 3 plus 1 uniquity groups of parameters and these groups are non dimensional. These three groups are termed as pi numbers for the problem of fluid flow past a circular cylinder. Thus, non dimensionalizer reduce the number of independent parameters from 6 plus geometry to only 3 plus the geometry. This is a significant improvement in that if we were developing a database for solutions to this problem, we would not need to vary the 6 parameters over their entire ranges, but only manipulate these 3 pi numbers over their ranges of values. The results obtained with one set 
or values of dimensional parameters could be used to predict the results for many more sets of parameters as long as the values of three, three pi numbers match. The same holds for numerical solutions as well, not just the experimental solutions, but numerical solutions as well. Since the variables and their various derivatives have all been normalized and are expected to be order 1, the non-dimensional groups of parameter which are now rendered as coefficient of the various terms indicate the importance of the term in that equation. Thus, if the coefficient of any one term is much less than 1, the term may be ignored as an approximation. Consideration of this point forms the bulk of the second part of this course, the theory of approximations. The three pi numbers are named after Osborn Reynolds, a British scientist, after Leonard Euler and William Froud, another British scientist. The two flows, model and prototype, are similar flows if the values of non-dimensional pi numbers formed with the uniquity parameters are identical in the two flows. In such situations, the normalized dependent variables have the same values at all sets of homologous points. This statement can be broken down into two parts. A, the modeling rules, the requirement similarity. Two floors are similar if the values of pi numbers formed with the independent parameters in the two floors are the same. Thus, if the three groups of parameters have identical values in two floors, model and prototype, then we say the two floors are similar. And if that obtained, then the values of the non-dimensional dependent parameters would have identical values and they form the prediction rules. If the two flows are similar, the values of the normalized dependent variables in one flow are the same as in the other flow at homologous points. What is homologous? Homologous are two points like this and this which bear a geometrically similar relationship to the boundaries of the flow. To illustrate this, let us consider the dependent variable shear stress tau at any location within the flow field. We know from Newton-Stokes relation for stresses that in the flow, the shear stress tau is measured by mu times del u by del z plus del w by del x. u and w are the velocity component in x and z direction respectively. So del u by del z plus del w by del x give you the rate of distortion of the fluid element. And the rate of distortion multiplied by the viscosity is the shear stress. On non-dimensionalization or normalization, this becomes tau is equal to mu v naught by L, u is replaced by v naught u star, z is replaced by L times z star and so on, so that the tau is now given by this. I take rho v naught square which has the dimensions of pressure or stress and normalize tau by dividing by rho v naught square to get normalized value of tau as tau star. And this tau star is function of 1 over Reynolds number del u star by del z square plus del w star by del x star. If the Reynolds number of two flows match and so also the Euler number and flow number then the values of these are identical in the two cases. 
And since Reynolds number are also matching, that means tau star would be identical in the two cases. If I measure the value of tau in the model and divide it by the corresponding value of rho v naught squared, then get tens, then I get tau star for the model, and this would have the same value for the prototype. So once I know tau star for the model, I can use it as tau star for the prototype and multiply that tau star by the value of rho v naught square for the prototype to obtain the tau for the prototype at the homologous point. This is the whole nature of similitude in fluid flows. So, again, in similar flows, the non-dimensional RHS of the above would have the same values in homologous point and therefore, tau star P is equal to tau star M. The tau star value in prototype is the same as tau star value in the model. Thank you.